Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. Well, the Fadal is stripped. In this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you some of the disassembly uh, when I pull the control out of this Fadal TRM. TRM stands for tool room mill. In actuality, all it is is a bed mill. Um, the interesting thing is it does have a Cat 40 spindle and it has a uh, pneumatic uh, draw bar. It is not set up for rigid tapping. Um, I've taken the head cover off to take a peek to see if it's possible to put an encoder on the spindle and if I can find the pulley and find a way to mount it, it might be possible, but I'm not sure I'm going to go through that trouble. Um, the whole goal of this project is to um, get this nice machine back up and running on a more modern Centroid control. The control I chose is Centroid Oak, um, and I'm going to drive uh, DMM Technologies DYN4 uh, drives, and connected to the drives are DMM Technologies NEMA 42 1.3 KW AC servos. So uh, with that, uh, let's get on to the disassembly and then uh, towards the end of the video, I'll give a brief overview of the back panel layout. Okay, here's the Fidal control. Uh, I'm taking out the uh, computer card cage, taking out the servo amplifier cage, uh, some boards uh, off that panel there and the monitor's going, the keyboard interface is going, and the keyboard itself is going. Um, the rest of the stuff's gonna stay. Manual pulse generators, the spindle motor's going, or, sorry, the spindle motor stays, but all the axis motors, those are all going as well, and the motor cables. So I'll just, uh, I'll bring you back a little as uh, I go and uh, just show you. It's basically unbolting things, unplugging things, um, clipping off, you know, tie wraps and that sort of thing. Um, again, it's just, you know, it's just disassembly, pretty straightforward. Um, and uh, if I run in trouble, I'll, I'll let you know. But I'm uh, going to get started now. Okay, so I'm going to disassemble or take out this card cage. I'm going to take try and take it out as an assembly. Everything is tagged and all these cables are going to go with the unit. Everything's plugged in, so it's just a matter of, of unplugging things, clipping off all these tie wraps and then cutting all the tie wraps back to where they came from so that uh, the cables won't be uh, damaged and uh, cut up. That way they can be reassembled if needed. I'm going to ship this card rack as an assembly. So uh, I have some large anti-static bags. I'll put it all in an anti-static bag and then bubble wrap it. But because the card cage, uh, cards are secured in the cage with this bar, uh, there's no point in uh, taking them out individually. So I'll just leave it that way. That's the plan at this point. Okay, so the card cage is bolted from the back side of this panel. So I'm gonna take the panel assembly out. I'll remove what I can before taking the panel out. These things, the power supplies, I don't think they're gonna matter, but the, the, the main components of the panel are gonna go. So I'll remove what I can just to make sure I don't damage anything. This is a, an assembly, so the servo amplifier assembly. Um, Glentech builds these and then they ship them to the manufacturers and the manufacturers put them in a wire them so it just unscrews from this back panel so that'll be easy removal same with the uh, monitor uh, it's just got some screws here that'll come out this uh, keypad interface will just unbolt unscrew and so forth so it won't, won't be too bad so uh, I'm getting ready to unbolt this I've removed clipped all the tie wraps all the cable ties off of everything so that it's easy to get everything out of the way. And again, this will go as an assembly because that's the way it was built. All right, so that's where I'm going now.
right here's the inside of the control cabinet. This housed the original monitor, keyboard, MPG for the Z-axis, and an e-stop. This is going to come out, it's going to get plated, and it'll be the support for the visa mount for the monitor. So this gets blanked off. So originally the original back paneling came down and across and this was open. And because this is stood off, there's a, a space between the monitor panel and the back panel itself. And I can actually, I've already cut out the aluminum plate, I'll show you that here in a little bit. Um, but it'll allow me to get the monitor cables snuck around and I'll probably mount the PC right here on the back panel. So the monitor cables will come around, plug right into the monitor PC. I'll also see about getting uh, a USB um, connector on the outside so you can plug into the uh, control and get your files transferred and so forth. So um, things that I opted to keep. Here's the main power switch. I kept that. Here's a line filter. I'm going to be keeping that. And uh, there's some uh, baristers right here as well. So I'll keep that. The rest of it went. Up above here is the braking resistor for the VFD. Uh, I'm replacing that. I'm going to use an Automation Direct GS3 uh, VFD. It's a sensorless vector drive. Um, so I'm getting the braking resistor that matches that. I'll put the DYN4 drives right on this area and I'll probably put Centroid Oak here and then leaving the space up above here for the, the PC. Okay, there's the back panel for the Fadal uh, control cabinet. And you'll see I have marked out where the uh, cutout is in the cabinet. And then right here, this is where that filter's at and this is where the switch is at. So I marked that out so I don't put anything behind it where it won't be accessible. So it's just pre-marking things. And as I said previously, I'll probably put the VFD up up high where it's out of the way of the uh, disconnect switch and then the Dyne 4 drives down below, Oak, and then the PC up in here. So let me get uh, things laid out and we'll take a look at it. Okay, what I'm going to try and do is go over um, how I did the uh, Visa monitor mount. I'm just doing a screen capture here on my computer. It's easier for me to just kind of do a slideshow. So what we got here is I've laid out uh, the panel. Basically, it is a sheet of 8th inch thick uh, steel. And then this uh, sheet that's on top of the steel is a piece of uh, brushed stainless just to give it a finished look on the front side. This is just a Visa monitor mount. I think I got it from monoprice.com. It's a heavy duty one. Uh, it'll support the uh, the new monitor quite well. Okay, here, um, so I can get the cables from the monitor into the control cabinet. What I'm using is one of Centroid's uh, cable reliefs. Uh, their design, basically. So here I've kind of laid it out. And uh, I'm drilling um, through the steel, the cold rolled steel, in through the, the uh, stainless steel. And you can see I've got it clamped to a backer board so it doesn't tear up on the other side. That stainless steel sheet is very, very thin. So here I've just basically uh, um, laid it out. I center punch through it. And um, I've already got these holes threaded. And then this is going to be, I think it was an inch and a quarter hole that I used. There you can see, this is a 3D uh, printed version of the strain relief. Um, just got it laid out here. Um, uh, got it screwed down in one corner and basically I squared it up and then I center, 
I center punched through uh, the strain relief into the uh, onto the steel so that I located it properly. And here I'm going with a uh, unibit uh, in through the the uh, steel uh, through the stainless steel. And uh, I flipped it over and I deburred it with uh, the next, which is the last step on my unit bit. I deburred the uh, sheet steel, the sheet stainless steel with it. And here you can see the completed hole. Um, it's clean. And uh, I'm going to redo this strain relief with slots that um, are sized for the cables coming off the monitor. Okay, here what I'm doing, I'm uh, getting ready to bond the stainless steel to the sheet steel. So what I did is I cleaned everything, both sides, the sheet steel with this acetone, and I cleaned the uh, stainless steel also with acetone, wiped it down until the towel was clean. And then I got 3M uh, contact spray adhesive 90 um, that I'll spray on the sheet steel, and then I'll spray it on the stainless steel. And I've got a J roller here that I'll start from the middle here and I'll work my way out, um, getting any air bubbles out. I, I, I spray both uh, substrates until they're just tacky. Um, that is, I let them dry until they're just tacky and then I put them together. And here's that piece of uh, stainless steel. Here's the sheet steel sprayed down with uh, the 3M contact adhesive and here's the stainless. And here they are together, and then again, I just use the J roller, and I start from the middle, and I work my way out. And there's the completed product, and uh, here I'll uh, give you guys a brief video overview of uh, the completed uh, operator's console, and video look at the back panel mounted inside the cabinet. And here's the monitor mounted to the cabinet, and the, uh, the panel that uh, I built. Here you can see the uh, the panel. I bonded that uh, stainless steel to the sheet steel. Well, the sheet steel was eighth inch thick. And then there's the uh, strain relief for the cables. Cables come out and go in to the cabinet that way and keep chips out. Uh, here's the visa mount. And um, there's uh, keyboard brackets that I make. It's basically eight inches wide by 16 inch long 16 gauge steel and then I just make a tray bend a tray uh, to hold the, the keyboard and it gets sandwiched between the uh, visa mount and the monitor pretty straightforward there and uh, so there it is all mocked up that's a touch screen monitor so let's go around to the back of the cabinet and take a look at the uh, the back panel. Sorry for the glare, but there is the back panel mounted in the cabinet. You can see the Lenovo Tiny computer there off the left and the, uh, the Automation Direct GS3 uh, sensorless vector drive at the top and uh, Oak down there at the bottom and to the left of Oak is its terminal block. We call it TB1. And then to the right of Oak is the, are the uh, Dyne 4 drives. There's space for a fourth axis if somebody ever wants to add it. And there's the e-stop relay right above the drives. And there's a line filter above that. And then there's a 24 volt DC power supply above that. That is uh, for basic logic power to uh, feed the pneumatic solenoid uh, for the power draw bar, and then there's um, some fuses there off to the right of that. Uh, that 24 volt power supply also will release the spindle brake on the Z-axis motor that goes right up there. All right, uh, sorry for the patchwork video, but uh, I did want to give you guys a, an overview of what's been going on with the Fidal TRM. Uh, my issue is that I've got so many projects going on, I bounce around between them all. And so it's hard to keep up, and it does take quite a while to do these videos and uh, edit them and get them put together. So I hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Talk to you on the next one.